together and race across a 72 kilometer wide lake and back. Boat A goes across at 72 kilometers per hour and returns at 72 kilometers per hour. Boat B goes across at 36 kilometers per hour and its crew, realizing how far behind it is getting, returns at 108 kilometers per hour. Turnaround times are negligible and the boat that, compete, that completes the round trip first wins. Which boat wins? By how much? And what is the average velocity of the winning boat? Okay, so what we know is we have a, a, a lake. So we've got a blue lake here, this all blue lake. And we know that the distance across this lake is 72 kilometers. You, uh, in the reading it says that, that boat A travels at 72 kilometers per hour. It doesn't take a lot of math to figure out that it took boat A one hour to get across. One hour. And uh, he returned and went the same speed going back. So it took him another hour to get back. So one plus one equals two hours. Boat, boat A finished the entire trip in two hours. Now how did boat B do? B, boat B, his velocity, velocity was 36 kilometers per hour and the the distance of course was the same the distance uh, this was his uh, start his initial velocity 36 kilometers per hour and his distance was 72 kilometers and then his uh, his second uh, leg of his trip he was 108 kilometers per hour and distance again equaled 72 kilometers for the round trip so what we have to do before we get to uh, boat B is we have to figure out how do we solve time. Uh, we know that velocity equals distance over time. So how do we solve for time? Well, if we have um, distance in this equation, the, the, our distance, our time, and we can do some simple algebra. We can we can divide. We can divide both sides by velocity, so times 1 over v, and we can multiply both sides by t, and that gets our, our time by itself because v over v equals 1, so that cancels out, and then the t cancels out, and then we, we're into, we end up with time equals distance over velocity. So distance over velocity, we know that he competed his first leg, his 72 kilometers, that's his distance, and 36 kilometers per hour. That's going to give us our time. The kilometers are going to cancel out, and we're going to get time. So how, how long did that take him? That 72 by 36 equals 2. It took him 2 hours to get the entire way across. We know that boat A got across and all the way back in two hours. So the distance that boat A traveled in two hours, boat B made half of that distance in the same amount of time. He was going half the speed. So it, it wants to know not only who won, but by how much. So we know that boat A won in, one, in, in two hours and boat B um, he started going back, he was going back at uh, one, uh, 108 kilometers per hour, so we can do 108, um, 70, 72 is our distance, 72 kilometers, divided by 108 kph is our, is our speed, and that equals, give me just a second, equals 0 0.67 hours which is a, approximately what it is 40 minutes when you convert um, I'll, let me show you how I got that so I had um, 0 0.67 hours over 1 and I know that there I can multiply that by 1 and it'll still be the same so uh, any number over itself 60 minutes and one hour are equal so being that they're equal we divide it by itself it equals one 
So we can do some dimensional analysis and cancel out the hours. And 0 0.67 times 60 equals 40. So 40 minutes. And that's the units we're left with, is minutes. So all we've done is we've figured out that it took boat B 2 hours and 40 minutes, or 2.67 hours to finish the entire race. But we know where he was whenever boat whenever boat A finished the race in two hours, we know that boat B had just gotten across the pond. So boat A actually won by seventy two kilometers because he he still had seventy two kilometers left to go. Okay, but there's one more question um, in this uh, in this portion. This is what is the average velocity of the winning boat. Now, here's where I have to explain the difference between speed and velocity. Um, if I go on a circuitous route around this circle, then th my speed is the distance the... Uh, so let's uh, pretend this is a circle, and this diameter of this circle is, um, is one foot. If I travel around a one foot circle, then the, the circumference is 3.14 feet. And let's say it took me one second, then I would be traveling at 3.14 feet per second. That's my speed. But velocity wants to know your, your final position, your x final, that's the final position. Subtract it from your x initial, your initial position. So my initial position is right here, and my final position is right here. And so I end right where I begin. And then it wants me to divide it by the, the time, the final time, minus the initial time, which and usually that's going to be whatever the, the final time is, because usually you say your initial time is zero. You can just arbitrarily call it zero. And so you just say your, your, your final position minus your initial position divided by time. And that's going to equal, um, equal my velocity. So my final position, if I were to just go straight across here, it would be one foot minus the zero as my initial position, and it would be one foot per second. But because I went all the way around and back to where I began, my, my final position is zero and my initial position is zero, so zero divided by one second is still zero, so the velocity, if you end up where you start, your average speed will be higher than your velocity um, because the velocity is just your total the total um, the total change in distance from start to finish your total change in distance and there was no change in distance at start and finish so the velocity is zero and so when it asks the velocity of the winning boat we know that the winning boat ended right where it started. So we do 0 minus 0 divided by the time was 2 hours and it still equals 0 kilometers per hour for the velocity.